Honestly, we should have used a condom, but we got distracted. Honestly, there are things that everyone can do to help protect their sexual health. Talk to a healthcare provider to find out how you can take action. And find out more at ownyoursexualhealth.com. Sponsored by Gilead. Hey, this is former NFL tight end Clay Harbor coming to you with Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app that's super fun. You can turn $10 into $250 with just a few clicks. And with the prize picks reboot policy, your entry stays in play if your player gets injured in the first half and does not return in the second. Crazy, right? Go to prizepicks.com slash believe, that's B-L-E-A-V, and enter code B-L-E-A-V for your first deposit match up to $100. Welcome to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. A brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney and Ann Varner. We're back. They can't keep us away. They keep trying. I don't know who they is. Are. I'm I wondering. I was they, curious to know who they are. I don't know, but they keep trying to not let us record, and we just keep fighting them, and we fight them until they lay down, and then they let us record. Do they know that we're fighting them? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was curious. Was, as long I, as we win, it doesn't matter. Right, right. I wasn't, yeah. I didn't know. I, I had no it's idea just, we were even it in just a It seems floor. like we can't get on a schedule. It is like very life hard. Like, cannot let us get on a schedule. It just, it cannot. It cannot. And we keep, like, punching it, trying to, like, trying. Let's record. And then finally it gets tired and lays down for a minute. And then we're like, let's record quick, quick. quick. <laughs> Before Make something it happen. else happens. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, hi, guys. We're hi, here. Hello. 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 And I, it's my turn to bake. Oh, thank God. I know. So what I did was I brought up some things that were pre-made to save some time. Because now that we're only doing one murder per goes episode, quick. it goes really quick. So yeah. I have to like get my shit together. So <laughs> Please do get your shit together. I have to arrive together. with my shit already together, yes. which is really tricky for me. That's the way Martha Stewart does it. I know. it. it she does. And I get it. But she makes a kajillion more money than us. And she has people. She's she has got people, people that do them. Their, their All she has job. to do is show up. She gets the glam treatment. Like, right. ain't nobody glamming she this. She tops a little something in a pot yeah. and, and done. that's it. She's like, oh, look at this. And then she's like, baked by Martha. $50,000 richer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that is not so. I had to get my shit together. Glad you did. I am making these lol treats called the best apple cinnamon muffin. The best? That's what it says. Whoa. That's, that's what call my. And I'm getting this recipe from Beyond Frosting. Huh. I didn't realize there was anything beyond frosting. Well, evidently there's apple muffins. I love them. <laughs> I love them. And I love apple anything, especially this time of year. Me too. I never get tired of the apple. Me neither. I get sick of the pumpkin Me as soon too. as it comes out. As soon out. as it comes out, I might have one pumpkin thing and then I'm like, okay, I did it. Right. But then I'm done. All about the apple. Me too. I could do apple all year round. Exactly. Now. Like I ain't got nary a problem. Me too. So in this recipe, there are three major steps. The first step is you have to make your apple filling. There's a filling? Yes. You take three to four medium green apples. Ooh. Well, I, you know me, I have to do my own thing. So I did two medium green apples. And then, you know, we get those little out honey crisp apples. Oh, yeah. I did three of those. Okay. So a little tart and a little so, sweet. Yeah, because I, I didn't want it all tart. Yeah. And then it says the juice of one lemon. I'm going to tell you in advance, I think that was too much lemon juice. I think we should have maybe done the juice of a half a lemon. Okay. Because when I smell this filling, it smells very lemony, which I don't appreciate with my apples. I want to smell the apple. Right. And then you take two tablespoons of brown sugar. Brown sugar. Yeah, girl. And two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. That was tablespoons. Two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of apple pie spice, and two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. Pure maple syrup. Pure. Wow. Pure. Love a pure. So you cut your apples up in small cubes. Mm -hmm. And then you put them in a pan, and then you put the lemon juice and you toss it all together. And then I took in a separate bowl the brown sugar, the flour, the cinnamon, the apple pie spice, and blended that all together. And then dumped it on top of the apples. Okay. You cook them on medium heat. 
and you just get them all stirred up and they'll and then after you get them all stirred up then you put in your maple syrup. Then we get them all stirred up now. <laughs> get them all stirred up. Now. You just go right ahead and, and just do it. Once you get all that done, once it's cooked, so you cook it until it's soft. Right. The apples are soft. Right. And then you, it has to cool. So what I did was I actually did this two days before. Okay. Well, that's a good idea because then all that yummy flavor it's been gets absorbed. in the fridge and it's, yeah, it's all absorbed. I just felt like it was better. So then you have to make your muffin batter, which I've already done. I took two cups of unsalted butter and browned it. Mm. That's right. And then I took some flour, some sugar, some baking powder, ground, more ground cinnamon, salt, one egg, cup of milk, and a quarter cup of sour cream. Oh, okay. And I put all that shit together. Just put it together. And then you mix it all up so you have kind of a wet batter. Okay. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to take that. And I'm going to blend my apples with it and get it stirred up. Okay. Do you fold them in? Or? You, do, you stir them in. You don't can't use beaters. Oh, gotcha. So so no beaters are used in this whole in recipe. In this last. The whole in, recipe. The whole recipe. Yeah. I just, okay. for this, I just whisk, whisked it. Whisked it? I whisked it. And then I'm going to make a streusel on top. I've already oh. toasted my chopped pecans. Mm. But you also take six more tablespoons of flour, five tablespoons of brown sugar, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, four tablespoons of unsalted butter cold. Wow. And then your toasted pecans. It doesn't say to toast your pecans, but what's the rule of thumb when you use nuts in a recipe? Toast your nuts. You got to toast your you nuts, You got to toast them. Toast your damn nuts. There's, it just doesn't make sense yeah. if you don't toast them. After I get everything in the oven, then I'll get this going, this streusel. And then I'm going to cook this on 425 for 16 to 20 minutes. Wow. Okay. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> absolutely perfect. A- absolutely so perfect. That is then, fantastic. Sounds like it's a gonna, full of fall. I cannot I wait. I know. I can't wait either. Because as I was mixing these two things up separately, I just, the smells, I mean, that's, it's the cinnamon. It's the cinnamon. The cinnamon. And then the cooking apples. That's mm-hmm. just, my whole house smelled so good. Yeah. That's what we're going to be, we, as in me, are going to be doing. In <laughs> you the and the person that you're at war yeah. with. Yeah. The one that I'm fighting. We're probably going to fight in the kitchen okay. too, but it's fine. Don't. I'm sure fine. you'll win, whatever it is. Yeah. Because that's how <laughs> I do things. While you and your friend are cooking in the kitchen, I'm going to talk about a murder. And I'm I'm excited to hear a murder case. Yeah. I I'm never case. excited to hear about a murder. No, I wish there weren't dark. so many. It is. It seems like an endless font of them. Yes. And there's just more coming every day. Yeah. And it's very sad. These trials that, that are going on, it's just all sadness. It is all sadness. But my hope is that maybe in telling some of these stories, number one, we'll be able to showcase our victims, which is something we've always done with our podcast. Yeah. And number two, maybe there's some kind of a don't do this thing that will save somebody in the long yeah, run. Yeah. Like, like maybe look at this and say, wow. You know, I really want to murder this person, but I listen to this awesome <laughs> podcast called Sugar Coated Murder. And after they baked something, they told me about a murder case. And now it didn't turn out so good for that murderer. So maybe I'm not going to murder this person. That's right. Maybe I'm just going to write them an angry letter. It's all I may or may not send it. It's all about eating good food and doing good in the world. That's, That's what, what our podcast is about. <laughs> That's us in a nutshell, guys. <laughs> all right. I'm going to start my murder now. So you yeah. get to get in. Okay. Quinn and Misty Witherspoon were facing some tough financial times in 2004. Are these Reese's people? Reese's people? Witherspoon? Oh, no. I don't know. I didn't research that. Uh I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Quinn was a a canine police officer with the Concord, North Carolina Police Department. And I've read some conflicting stories, but one of them worked as the treasurer of their church. They, they went to a, a, ba- a local Baptist church, and one of them was the treasurer. Some things I've read, actually court documents that I read, said that Misty was the treasurer. And then there's some other documents that I read that said Quinn was the treasurer. I know that Quinn was a deacon at the church. Anyway, they had been married for 11 years and had three children. Misty took care of paying all the bills for the family. She handled all the finances while Quinn brought him the bacon. Not the bacon. He did. He brought in the bacon, yeah. making the people of Concord, North Carolina, safe is what he did. That's right. He did. Misty had fallen behind on their utility bills. And also, she had fallen behind on their mortgage payments. Oh, God. 
So times were, were really, really tough. And at, at one point, Quinn saw a, a notice that came in, in the mail about a credit card bill that hadn't been paid. Mm-hmm. So he decided to go to his credit union and see if he could figure out what the heck was going on. Okay. He wasn't really sure. And I think sometimes couples fall into this where you've got one person who's responsible for all the bills and the other person doesn't hasn't got a clue about their finances. They're just assuming everything is getting paid. And then somebody gets something in the mail. It's like, ooh, this is late. But it could be I don't pay it on the day it's due. I pay it before it's actually later before they're going to report it to my credit union, you know? Yeah, exactly. As the bill payer, you got to do all kinds of juggling. You got to do some juggling. And sometimes the non-bill payer doesn't understand that. They don't see it. That's right. They just think it magically happens. That's right. it doesn't, and it can be a real struggle. So we know probably from past experiences that this is not a good way to live your life, that there should be two people responsible yes, for the bill. there bills. should be communication and there should be a partnership yeah. of people involved. Like you should have date night and bill night. Yes. Two separate nights. Every week. Like this, we're going to make these bills. And yeah, you know, that is not what Quinn and Misty were doing. At one point, Quinn had to borrow money from a supervisor because this utility bill had gotten out of control and they were threatened to turn off the power and they didn't have the money in the bank account. So he went to a supervisor, which I know was probably very difficult for him. By 2005, Quinn had become suspicious that maybe Misty had been spending some money where she shouldn't be spending money. He goes to that credit union and he starts looking at the family finances. Now, while he was there, he discovered that Misty had also fallen behind on several credit card payments, which was a shock to him because he thought he only had one credit card. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so he goes in and he immediately takes Misty off the account. He's like, oh, no. And he asked the credit union to please lower my spending limit. Like, let's get that limit let's under, get control. That under control. See what we can do. Then he says, OK, well, I'm going to take out a personal loan and start paying off some of this debt that I owe. And when he did that, the finance officer said, let me just let you look at your credit report. (gasps) And when Quinn looked at the credit report, not only did he see those credit card accounts, but also some finance companies where some loans had been taken out in his name. Misty had been very busy. On top of all of this, Quinn found out in that time period that Misty had stolen close to $18,000 from the church. What? Where yeah. the hell is she spending this? I don't really know. Really? I don't know where she was spending the money. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I don't know. The Witherspoons, it is a lot of money. And you don't mess with money. Don't steal money from the church. You don't take money that's not yours. You don't. That's that bad is a, juju. That is really bad juju and it will mess you. Yeah. But to take it from the church is a double whammy. Whoa. I mean, you're stealing from Jesus. Yeah. That's don't not steal a, from Don't Jesus. steal from Jesus. That's the another tip. We're doing a lot of good See tonight. all the good we're doing in the world. Yeah. But the weather spoons, weather, the weather, well, the weather spoons. Well, whether or not you like well, it. Well, well respected in the church. <laughs> And the pastor and the deacons got together and they said, okay, Misty made a mistake. We're going to allow her. How much mistake? 18,000 mistakes. We're going to allow her to pay the money back to the church. Okay. Okay. That was real nice of them. That was nice. As I said before, it had been a really rough year. This was actually falling in from 2004 now in 2005. So it's, it's, yeah. It's like there was some kind of a dark cloud hanging over them. On September 13th, 2005, that cloud got a little darker. Misty called 911 and told the dispatcher there had been a terrible accident and her husband had been accidentally shot in the head. No, no, no. That, that was no, there is, that is a, that is a highly improbable accident. Well, let's just, let's just listen. Just listen. Okay, but I got my hackles up. <laughs> your hackles. My hackles they <laughs> let's up. Sit your hackles down, lady. <laughs> my hackles is up. She said she had been taking Quinn his service revolver when she tripped and fell. And when she hit the floor, the gun went off and Quinn had taken a bullet to the head. Was he lying on the floor when it when it went off? Because it skidded across the floor and hit him right in the knob. No, that's not what happened. She she does not understand physics. When the EMTs arrived, Quinn, who was laying face down on the sofa, had no pulse. His service revolver and a children's book were on the floor next to the sofa. A children's book? A children's book. 
Misty stood close by with blood on her shorts and her shirt. She said that she had been looking for something in the closet when Quinn's service belt fell out and hit the floor. She said when it did, the revolver fell out of the belt, but she was worried that maybe the flashlight on the revolver had gotten broken when it fell, and she was concerned, so she picked it up, and she was taking it to Quinn, who was taking a nap on the sofa, by the way. Wait See, a minute. And, when, and on the Excuse way- me, wake to, up. So wait up. Just a I have a loaded gun to give you. We finished. On the <laughs> way over, she tripped on the children's book and fell. Oh my God, she tripped on the children's and book. And that is when the gun went off and hit when. Police immediately rip off the scene and start an investigation into what happened. Was the children's book Jack be nimble, Jack be quick? <laughs> Did not tell me what. Was it Jack and Jill went up the hill? I don't know. I'm going to need to know what children's book has tricked this woman up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did it was it did not say I wish that it had now. Well we should you we there should be details like that. There should Those you would important. have thought it would have been huh, in the no, court it, documents. Yeah. yeah or but, at least in a crime scene photo. Well I didn't have time to order uh, in crime scene photos <laughs> for this particular case. Yeah, I but thought next time have to do that for all of them. Next time, be certain, <laughs> but the requested early. Yes, please do. We need crime scene photos. Oh, my God. So they take Missy to headquarters, and they start to ask her again what's happening. And she said, again, this Stick is what happened. Story. Sticking to the story. Her stupid story. Yes. The detectives leave and go back to the house. As part of their investigation already, after they've talked to Misty, they go back and they listen to the 911 call. And during the call, the operator said what type of gun was involved in the shooting. And there was like 15 seconds of silence. But in the background, they can hear somebody opening doors and closing them and something falling to the floor. And that seemed really odd to the detective. Because she said that once she discovered that her husband had been shot, she stayed with him until the police arrived. The oh. gun should have been next to her. Yeah. But she, that's not where, that's that didn't happen. That's not where the gun was? Well, it was, but if if she had, in fact, been next to him, that's where it would have been. She shouldn't you. have been opening and closing doors. Okay. And nothing should have been falling on the floor. No. She's, she said that she had put her hand over the hole in the back of the man's head and stayed until EMTs arrived. Oh, no. I don't feel like she did that at all. No. I feel so, like she was cleaning the house. Something. She uh, was hiding, doing something. I had 18000 cold dollars. Dollars in cash. So the detectives then go back to the house and they start their big investigation. Now, because of the manner of death, Quinn's body had not been moved because he didn't have a pulse when EMTs got there. Yeah. So they didn't touch him. He was yeah. dead. They were like, they oh, we out. Yeah. The medical examiner did come. Examiner. 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 Huh. Not the examiner. <laughs> He's not the one that gives the test. <laughs> I thought maybe he was. He was given a so test. So in South Carolina, I'm not sure you have to pass a test. I know, but you. Just I think you just to have to have a license a thermometer in a in a bucket or a butthole. That's it. You don't even have to have a high school diploma to be a medical examiner. You have to be 16 years or older. I think that's it. And you have to, you cannot be a, I don't think you can be a felon. Maybe. You have to have a valid driver's license. That's it. Driver's license. Yeah. But you cannot be a felon either. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. So this medical examiner joins the detectives. And they worked together and roll Quinn's body over and place him on the floor. He had been lying on a pillow. Laying, he was laying. Not he wasn't lying. He, he wasn't didn't lie about telling nothing. untruths right there while he was wife. napping. He was laying on a pillow, and she was lying. <laughs> she was. She may have been, and he was on the left side of the sofa. Okay. Okay. Misty told them that she had been holding the gun in her right hand, facing out when she tripped. Now the service revolver was a right ejecting revolver. And in case there are people that don't know what that means, yeah. it means that when your weapon is fired, the shell casing flies out to the right. Yeah. So if Misty had the gun in her right hand and she was facing Quinn, who was laying on the left side of the sofa, that shell casing should have been somewhere around his feet. Yes. Instead, the shell casing was found stuck to his right arm, and the bullet was found in the pillow. Oh. The medical examiner also examiner also noted that the blood flow 
was going in the wrong direction for Uh-oh. him to have been shot the way that Misty said he was shot. Okay. So they they are like, Misty, we're going to need you to come back so we can do another another interview. We need to talk to you some more, Misty. <laughs> Misty. <laughs> So they say, Misty, something's not matching up. So you're going to have to tell us again what it is that happened. Misty, Misty, what happened? What happened? On October the 5th, they've got her back at the station. Now, she has now had two interviews, and I think she went back to the house and tried to walk through what it is that happened. Now, on the 5th, they bring her back to the station for another interview, and they tell her, listen, lady, your story is not adding up. What, what you're telling us is not true. It cannot be true. There is no way it can be true. You got some explaining to do. So this time she changes her story. And she tells the detectives that the day Quinn died, the power company had called to say that they owed $894. And if the bill wasn't paid that day, the power would be turned off. She hung up with them and went to get some lotion from the bathroom closet. Because, you know, once you talk to that utility company, you got you dry dropped, hands. You are dropping and chopped and you cannot got stand it another lotion. minute. And when she was looking for the lotion in the bathroom closet, Quinn's gun fell out of a basket. Well, now she in the bathroom with a gun? I don't not know. It doesn't not I don't know a lot of police officers that keep their, their weapons in a basket in a, basket in in the the bathroom. bathroom where the lotion is. Especially when you got three kids. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't feel like Quinn was that kind of a irresponsible gun. Right. Owner. Right, right. So anyway, when the gun fell out of the basket, she thought it was a sign from God saying that she should kill herself. So she takes the gun and she goes to Quinn's workshop and she's thinking about killing herself. But Quinn's canine, he has their, the canine dog lives with them and his yeah. name is Tank. And Tank wouldn't leave her alone. He kept nudging her, nudging her, almost like he knew, you know, something's wrong with you. You got to refocus. So she couldn't shoot herself. She goes back into the house. And she's still very distraught. And and she stands toward the middle of the back side of the sofa. And she starts praying, please, Lord, help me. And her legs get weak. No, they don't. And then she puts her hand on the back of the sofa. And the family cat jumps up and runs across her arm. And that caused her to pull the trigger. What? And now she's blaming the cat? Now the she cat. is blaming the kitchen. She said, first of all, she brought Jesus all the way back in this. She, Jesus is right back in it. She's praying for some no. answers. Jesus said, I am not. No, I'm not in that house right now. No, Jesus said, you took my money. I, I'm I need not to coming step to your house this. right now. I'm out. She said the this reason is she dumb. She said the reason that she lied was because she was scared her children would be taken from her. If the police thought she was suicidal. She's murderous. That's even worse. <laughs> I know. I don't. The, the line of thinking is like, She's what not, are you? I, I wonder if this, she was this dumb when Quinn married her. I don't know. The detective said no. And this Mm-mm. is what happens when you cannot. Mm-mm. Tell me again about that cat. Let, let's yeah. go over the cat thing again, because you, you didn't mention anything about the cat before. Do you even have a cat, Missy? And she says, well, listen, it wasn't the cat. The cat didn't cause me to pull oh the trigger God. so much as I just pulled the trigger, but I didn't know why I pulled the trigger. To murder your I just husband. pulled it. I pulled so that the you trigger. Can get his life insurance and do whatever it is you're still doing. She must have been buying a lot of one of those baskets, longer burger baskets. Something. That's what she. That's the basket holding her lotion. I bet it was longer burger. Oh, you know what? And that's, that's a good why point. she's so in debt. That's right. Them baskets are addictive. They are. Well, I never got addicted because I don't understand why anybody would pay that much money no. for a freaking basket. Me neither. I like didn't. I bought one. It was so expensive. And now it's in my in my chest of junk. Yeah. Holding batteries. I bought one and then I had a lab who didn't live with us that much longer who ate it. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of money for a basket. I can go to Target. My house bells, I can go to the dollar store and get one for a dollar. A whole dollar. A dollar. Or I can just go to Boone Hall, get some strawberries and cut the the little plastic handle off that and it's it's a basket. That's cheap ass basket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I can do it. Baskets are not expensive. So anyway, after that interview, they just went ahead and arrested her. They arrested her for murder. We're done talking to you. The autopsy proved that Quinn had been shot from a mere six inches away (gasps) and that Misty had been behind the sofa, not in front of it. So did she, she didn't shoot through the sofa though. She shot like over the sofa. He was, he was sleeping. Oh my God, what a bitch. He was taking a nap. 
And listen, those guns are heavy. If that gun had fallen on the floor, I bet he would have woken up. He would have. He would have woken up. Yeah. and Yeah. I think that I'm just going to say right now, I'm no CS forensic detective thing, but I will say that I think that the crime scene was staged. (laughs) You're very smart. I feel like that that book was not originally there. (laughs) I think she just threw that down. That's That's what she was looking for. Something. Well, and you know, she had, she had one, one child was at school when this happened, but she had twin babies that were asleep in the house when it happened. So a biatch. Yeah. Anyway, just so you know, after Quinn passed away, but before she was arrested, she got $82,102.27. That's it? That's the government death benefit that she received for her husband. On top of that, she got $91,000 in life insurance and $24,138.68 from Quinn's 401k. So it's like motive. Guess what? But. She owe a lot of bills. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. owes church 18K right there. You better write that check right now. 18K on top of that, girl, they also found out that she had opened up some credit cards in her sister's name. She is a Canavan B. Yup, that's Where right. Where did this money go in? Like, what was she buying? And why didn't why didn't Quinn notice that? I can like, see why, why, why we're doing stuff? really good. Because he thought they had one credit card show. That's right. <laughs> yep, he had no God. idea. Misty was convicted of first-degree murder, and she was sentenced to life without parole. (gasps) Nice. And they tacked on a few extra years for embezzlement from the church, because even though the church did not press charges, the state state did. did. And identity theft because of those credit cards that she opened in her sister's name. And she, well, and she opened them in her husband's name, but I guess... They don't consider that entity theft because that you're married to them, but I think they should. Quinn had been a Concord police officer for 11 years, and he loved working with his partner, Tank. He received the Award of Merit in 2001 from the International Police Works Dog Association. He was the first recipient of that award ever. Crime scenes don't lie. Crime scenes don't lie. And you know what? What's that girl's name? Sierra? Hips don't lie. Uh, perhaps not. Shakira. I think oh, her name is Shakira. 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 Yes. The, her hips don't lie. Her, her hips don't lie. <laughs> and, but where, and, and Misty lied, but the crime scene, the crime scene does not lie. Yep. Yeah. So I am very sad that those children had to grow up without their parents. It sucked. So it's that is the sad. story of Quinn Witherspoon's murder. Listen, here's the lesson. Pay the bills with your spouse, number one. Number yes. two, don't steal money from your freaking church or Do your not, sister. Don't no. open credit cards. It, it Just stop it. Yeah, here's an idea. Stop having babies and go get a job. <laughs> J-O-B. Well, you can have babies and have a job. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is if you're that far in debt. Right. If you are having to steal money from the church and you're still late on your mortgage and your electric bill and your credit card bills. I wonder if she was a gambler. Maybe she did that online gambling. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It didn't. It was really weird because they didn't talk about any of that in any of the articles that I looked at. They just didn't address what what she was doing with that Uh money. I mean, I guess her kids were dressed in really good clothes. I don't know. Probably not from the Carter house. I don't know. All right. Well, what smells have, good in my kitchen? Yes. And it's, this was great timing. So before I have you taste that, I would like for us to break real quick and just hear a little bit from our podcast friends. Okay. Okay. I'm Maddie. And I'm Amber. And, and we're Witches Talking Tarot. And we're bringing you all things at home. Every Tuesday and Thursday, twice a week for your magical pleasure. Join us as we dive into aliens, cryptids, the Illuminati, the Illuminati super in, in the, the natural. natural. Because that's the kind of witches we are. So join these high energy witches twice a week. Come sit a spell and see why we'll be your favorites. Fancy taking a humorous trip down a random topic each week? You do? Well, you're in luck. Casting Views, presented by me, Dan, and a host of guests, bring you just that. With topics from the world of entertainment, science, sport, and everyday life, there's bound to be a topic that's going to inform and amuse. Catch Casting Views every Sunday on all listening platforms now. And we're back. Here we are. 
We're back. Trout wants a muffin. Please support our podcast friends. That's why we do their promos and they do our promos because we all support each other. There's a lot of, there's plenty of space in this podcast world for everybody. And we like to see our friends successful. Amen so, to that. Please tune in and, and give their podcasts a try too. Please do. Okay, Sugar, it is time to taste this hot and steamy apple cinnamon muffin. I love a hot and steamy. Hot. I love a hot muffin mm-hmm. with butter, with butter on it. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. 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 Oh my it's god, hot, but it is good. It is good. Oh god, that the apples in it. So it came out really dark, but it's not overcooked because the batter was that dark. Yeah, from the cinnamon, mm-hmm. it's very cinnamony, cinnamony, cinnamony. <laughs> But delicious. Well done. Well done. Oh, well done. So okay, guys. Well, if y'all want the recipe, you can email us at murder.sugarcoated at gmail.com. Ta-da! And also, the holiday baking season is here, guys. Oh, yeah. It's here. And I just want to tell you, your holiday season baking is going to need to be upped. Up it. You got to up the ante you got to show people up with your holiday bacon there is only one way to do that hello vanilla our small batch bourbon based homemade killer vanilla you got it so So if you want some which you do go ahead and email us let us know how many bottles you're buying for yourself and for your family because that <laughs> they make really great stocking stuffers they make good christmas gifts it's a great hostess gift for somebody that's hosting the thanksgiving dinner for your family oh, yeah you know don't show up empty-handed don't take one take kill of vanilla kill of it. oh my god what a, what a lovely a gift lovely that would be yes yeah. so Anyway, we email us. us. Yeah, email us at the murder dot sure code. And so we also have social media. We're on Threads. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Guys, we're on it. We're on it. But it's so, not. It's it's not Twitter anymore. No, it's X. But what I'm not saying X. It's so weird. No, it's Exeter. X Exter. It's Twitter. Twitter. What everybody calls it. Twitter. So anyway. We're on Twitter. So follow us on all or at least one of those social medias. We appreciate it. Yeah. And if you haven't done it, please subscribe to our show wherever you listen from, because that really helps us with the visibility in the charts where we're really trying to break into the top 500s. And that just makes us feel good. And it does make us feel good. And also leave us a good review. We've not had a review in a long time. Oh. So you can review each and every episode or you can review, leave a review for a whole podcast. But every time you listen to an episode, just rate us. Give us a five star. You know we deserve it. <laughs> yes, we do. Because we're, we're doing good in the world. Because we're doing good in the world. And we're telling people don't steal from Jesus. Don't steal from Jesus. That's right. Or and your sister. No. It's me. Communicate with your spouse or your loved one or your partner, your financial partner, and make a time for yourselves and time for your bills. That's right. It's, it's the only way to do it, guys. If you're at home being the only bill payer, it's not a good situation. Unless you're really the only one in the house. And then so well, you yeah, can't help there's it. There's another person <laughs> who be paying those bills with you. Bring yes. them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Be there a good go. checks and balance system. And guys, we love you. We do. We wish you the best. And we hope that you stay safe and don't murder. Well, if you kill people, we will talk about you. And we're going to tell everybody what a dumbass you are. So <laughs> make good decisions, guys. And have a good This week. has been Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. It's a deliciously entertaining Bye. true crime podcast. Like what you heard? You can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook fan page and share with friends. Thanks for listening to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Sponsored by Gilead. Last night was fun, but honestly, we should have used protection. I learned about an HIV prevention option called PrEP, or pre-exposure prophylaxis. And it means routinely taking prescription medicine before you're exposed to HIV to help reduce your chances of getting it. PrEP is about 99% effective when taken as prescribed. It just doesn't protect against other STIs, so we'll need to remember to use condoms and other healthy sex practices. You should look into it. Visit findoutaboutprep.com. You can also talk to your healthcare provider to learn more about PrEP and all your HIV prevention options. 
Acorn TV is your new home for obsession-worthy mysteries with captivating series from around the world. Indulge in gripping dramas and suspenseful thrillers. From cozy to calculated, from misdeeds to murder. Binge classics, new titles, and exclusive originals with Acorn TV. Stream anywhere, anytime, always ad-free. Visit acorn.tv for a 30-day free trial with promo code ACORN30. Acorn TV. Great TV. Solved.